Shalom to the Lord's elect of the nation of Israel. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, Bashim Rakakwadash. And it's another video. This time I'm going to go to the comment board and I'm going to deal with this individual, Nick Lamb. Now, he came on the comment board of this video I did entitled, uh, So You Want to Make Her Your Hebrew Israelite Wife. A very spirited video, <laughs> to say the least. Anyway, this individual, Nick Lamb, comes on my comment board, and there's a couple of topics discussed. One of the topics is uh, fornication. Because I told him that um, he doesn't understand marriage according to the Bible. All right? And actually, uh, it started with the line that I made in the video, or that I said in the video, about hitting it and quitting it. Because when you're dealing with today's so-called women, if you can call them that, you know, just like the song says by uh, Cindy Lauper, girls just want to have fun. These women are not really interested in a relationship with you. Now, if you find a woman that's truly interested in a relationship with you, and she can accept the fact that you're a Hebrew Israelite, then... It's all good. Deal with her. And hopefully you all have a, a, a good relationship. <laughs> but as far as just meeting these women out here at random, you know, especially if you meet her off the, uh, most, most individuals are meeting women off the social media pages, like, you know, like um, uh, Plenty of Fish and uh, uh, what else? Um, I don't go to these... Uh, internet sites to meet one to meet women so i wouldn't really know uh i know plenty of fish is one of them um tinder bumble now if you think that these women are really interested in having a relationship with you then you're deluded all right they're on they're on the social media pages to get as many men as their figures can attract you know when they get bored, when they get tired, it's on to the next man. You know, in the manosphere, they call it monkey branching. And that's what these women are all about. They're all about monkey branching, swinging from one branch to the other. That's what they're into. That's the way of today's so-called woman. So a brother who's in the truth and he's burning, especially a young brother, like I said in the video, I'm at the age where I don't think about women like that. I'm, I'm at I'm at that age, but a, a brother that's young, and he's burning, meaning he wants he has sexual desire. It would be best if he's going to deal with the, that kind of woman. It would be best for him not to get emotional emotionally caught up and involved with her. Certainly not trying to build some kind of relationship with her when she doesn't want a relationship. She just wants to hit it and quit it. I mean that's just the reality of today's women. Okay, so that's why I made the statement hitting it and quitting it. Okay, now if the Heavenly Father, because at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father controls everything through His only begotten Son, He controls everything. So if the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, wants you to stay with that woman, guess what? You're going to stay with that woman and she's going to stay with you. But if that's not the case, there's nothing you can do to keep that woman in a relationship with you. When she wants to leave, hey, she's going to leave. And in reality, there's nothing you can do about it because the, the law, the society is on the woman's side. It's totally on her side. This is why it is written, uh, a woman shall compass a man. That's in the book of Jeremiah. Okay, this society is geared to the woman. All right. As a matter of fact, I brought out the uh, piece of information about the cities. The cities are called metropolis. Do you know what the word metropolis mean? It means mother city. The cities were created to cater to women. All right? See, a man can go out in the woods, go out in the wilderness and rough it. Very few women can do that. <laughs> very, very few. 
all right? The wilderness is basically for men. The cities are basically created for the woman. In the cities, everything is there to their convenience, okay? So that being said, let me get into the purpose of this video, dealing with the word fornication. Now, this guy, Nick Lamb, he thinks that fornication is uh, premarital sex. Let me... Let me show you uh, around where this comes in, okay? All right, so I ask him, what is marriage, Nick? What act constitutes marriage? So he came back with marriage as a covenant, not simply the sexual act. The sexual act is to make one of the flesh. Well, that's what happens when a man and woman come together at the act of sex. Do, do, they, do they not become one flesh? This is not a good thing to do without the mutual intent of a covenant. The, the, co the word covenant means agreement. Now, when the man and woman agree to pleasure each other, that's the covenant right there. That's the agreement. And guess what they're having? They're having sex. And to go even deeper, a man and woman can only have sex if, if the woman's a virgin because the, the word sex is from the Latin sextus, which means to cut. Now, when a man takes a virgin, what does he cut in the virgin? He cuts her hymen, which is part of her vagina, okay? Which is also known in the Bible as the token of her virginity, okay? So in reality, um, the act of sex is take, uh, takes place when a man meets a woman and that woman is a virgin and that man is having sex with her for the very first time. Okay, because the word sex means to cut. Most people don't know the meaning of words, okay? And that's what creates all this ignorance because people do not know the meaning of words. All right, so the sexual act is to make one of the flesh, so says Nick. This is not a good thing to do without the mutual intent of a covenant. I already explained covenant. Then he puts the scripture. I don't know what this has to do with, with uh, what is being discussed. See, his thing is he doesn't understand the word fornication. He thinks that if you have sex before so-called marriage, and he's thinking of the marriage of the state. You got to go and get that blood test, and then you, you got to go to the state and get a piece of paper. Then you got to go to the church and you have that wedding. That, that is not marriage. Marriage, according to the Bible, simply means a man and a woman has sex. All right? When Adam got with Eve, there wasn't no blood test. There wasn't no state. There wasn't no pastor standing by Adam and Eve and then pronouncing them to be married. That came way later, okay? All right, that, that, was a, that was not something that the Heavenly Father set up, okay? That's not true marriage, all right? True marriage is when a man and a woman have sex, okay? Now let's get to Scripture. Exodus 22 and 16, And if a man entice a maid, the maid meaning a young woman, okay? Entice meaning he gets into her head, he, he, you know, he charms her. Okay, he, he charms her, right? That's what it means. If a man charms a woman, that is not betrothed. She's not joined to any other man. Because if he would have sex with her, then that would be adultery. Because that woman is promised to another man. Okay? That is not betrothed, meaning she's not joined or spoken for by another man. And lie with her. What the hell does that mean? It means to have sex with her. Okay? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Now she becomes his woman. Then you see the word endow. That's where you get the word dowry from. Now he has to pay the father. Of, um, back then it was 50 shekels of silver. Okay, 50 shekels of silver. And the woman becomes his wife. All right? That was the dowry price. Okay? That's why even in today's so-called marriages, who gives the bride away? The father does. If the father is still alive, the father 
gives the bride away. Back then, the father owned his daughter. His daughter was property. So if a man came and married his daughter, the father had to be uh, uh, compensated, okay? Recompensed, compensated. And back then it was 50 shekels of silver, okay? Even when you read the next verse, it says, if her father utterly, why is the father mentioned? And why not the mother? Because the father gave away his daughter. That proves, that shows you that a woman is property to a man. First to her father and then to her husband. Okay? If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. There you go. And that woman becomes his wife. Okay? So that is marriage according to the Bible. All right? So let me keep reading with my responses to to uh, Nick. So I, after he wrote what he wrote when he posted that scripture, without understanding, of course, I wrote, yes, the act constitute the marriage, which simply means joined together. And the word wife comes from the old English word with. Some say waif, some say with. You can look it up, which means woman. And the word woman means servant. It's from the Latin meaning servant. Goes back to Genesis 3 and 16. Let's read that. Genesis 3 and 16. This is the purpose of a woman. The word woman means servant. Genesis 3 and 16. Unto the woman he said, and what woman is spoken about here? Eve. Okay. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Today they call it labor pains. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. See? So a, wo a woman is nothing but a helpmeet to a man, a servant, if you will. That's her job, okay? And her, de her desire is supposed to be to her husband. Now that word husband, how many people know the definition of the word husband? You say husband, immediately they're thinking of the, the wedding and, the, the, you know, and oh, that's your husband? Oh, when did you all get married? How was the wedding? <laughs> the word husband just means planter. That's all it means, planter, like a husband man. Now what does a man plant in a woman? His rod which brings forth his seed, which goes into the woman, and guess what? She brings forth children, okay? The word husband just means planter. What does a man plant in a, in, in a woman? His rod, which brings out his seed, okay? You gotta know the meaning of words, man. That's how you combat the ignorance, okay? Anyway, yes, the act constitute the marriage, which simply means joined together, and the word wife comes from the old English word waif, which means woman. Anyway, the truth is not for everyone. Yeah, because I'm not going to keep typing comments back and forth, all right? So he comes back with this. What is fornication? What act constitutes fornication? So as you can see, I replied to him, uh, fornication comes from the Greek word porneo. Pronounced porn, porn, you, which, it, which is a metaphor meaning to be given to idolatry, to worship idols. Literally, any laws given by the Heavenly Father that is broken is not only sin, which is transgression of the law, 1 John 3 and 4, it is also fornication. Any law that's broken that the Heavenly Father gave us is fornication. Okay? Now I gave him an example. 1 Corinthians 5 and 1 is an example of fornication. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 5. And many of these wacky tacky Christians don't understand fornication. They really think fornication is premarital sex when there's no such thing as premarital sex. Sex is marriage. You see where the ignorance comes? 
because people do not know the meaning of words. They don't look up the meaning of words. They don't go back to the etymology of a word. There's a thing called etymology, people. The word etymology, etym means Greek, and ology means study. I'm sorry, etym means truth from the Greek word. Etym is a Greek word, which means truth. Ology is a Greek word, which means study. Okay, let me say it again. <laughs> because I, I butchered it. Etym is a Greek word that means truth. Ology is a Greek word that means study. Now put it together. The study of truth in words, etymology. So you got to go back to the etymology of a word to, to fully understand what it means. There's a thing called new speak, which was a term used in the, in the movie 1984. New speak was created by the wicked elite to bring ignorance upon people. New speak. What is new speak? Let's get the definition of new speak. Is it a word? Well, let's find out. And let's, and let's see if new speak has not been applied, especially when dealing with the scriptures, dealing with the Bible. New speak, ambiguous, now that word ambiguous right there, let's define the word ambiguous, open to more than one interpretation, having a double meaning, ambiguous. Ambiguous. There you go. Bear with me for a minute. So let's get back to... Um, let's get back to Newspeak. Newspeak. So now we know what the word ambiguous means. Ambiguous. Open to more than what? More than one meaning. Ambiguous, euphemistic language used chiefly in political propaganda. And what was the purpose of Newspeak? The, the purpose of Newspeak was to uh, have a word mean or have different definitions for a word. Actually, the purpose of Newspeak was to change the original definition of a word. Like, let me give you an example. The word gay has undergone Newspeak. Gay used to mean happy. Like gay au Paris, happy. The word gay used to mean happy. Now it means homosexual. So what are they saying here? They're saying if you want to be happy, be a homosexual. You're gay. Okay, that's an example of new speak. And there are other words too that have undergone new speak. As a matter of fact, there's a scene in the movie in 1984 where um, I forgot the name of the individual. I believe they were in the cafeteria and they were discussing new speak. And then he brought out this. Uh, copy of uh, the 11th uh, edition of the dictionary, something like that. You, you got to see the scene. Then he, then he makes a statement. He says, the destruction of words is a beautiful thing, something like that. So Newspeak was created to destroy the original meaning of words. So now you can control people. Now you can bring in ignorance. Okay. And the scriptures speak about new speak. Let's bring out a scripture on new speak. His words. Let's get that. Talk about Esau, Edom, beginning with the top wicked elite. Okay, they control the minds of people through new speak. That's what 1984 was all about control. Let's read the scripture here. Here's the book of Psalm 36 and 3. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Newspeak. 
He have left off to be wise and to do good. Yeah, he was created to do evil. Esau, Edom, beginning with the top banking families. They're the wicked, man. That's just another example of them being the wicked. Now, here's the main scripture right here. New speak is an example of Esau being the wicked. Okay, this is the book of Psalm 55 and 21. The words of his mouth was smoother than butter, but war was in his heart, ambiguous. He has words having different meanings. That's why anyone will tell you the hardest language to learn, mostly foreigners will tell you that, is the English language. Why? Because so many words have so many different meanings. Okay? It used to be a time when a word spoken meant what it meant. Not anymore. And you can thank Newspeak for that. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. New speak, the ambiguous use of language, the ambiguous use of words, new speak. Okay? All right, so let's get back to... Let's get back to this. So again, let me read this again. What is fornication... Nick Lamb asks, what act constitutes fornication? So I came back with fornication comes from the Greek porneo, which is a metaphor, meaning, meaning to be given to idolatry, to worship idols, literally any laws given by the Heavenly Father that is broken and is not only sin, which is transgression of the law, it is also fornication. All right? Then... I see he's replied to me. Then I put 1 Corinthians 5 and 1, the example of fornication, but has nothing to do with so-called premarital sex. And uh, when, you, when you read 1 Corinthians 5 and 1, let's read that real quick. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from you. Now, what was the deed, which was a wicked deed? This man had his father's wife. In other words, this son had sex with his father's woman. Now, where's premarital sex in there? Even though they had sex, but where's premarital sex in there? No, the act of taking your father's woman is, is fornication, meaning you have broken the law. Where is the law on that? Let's go to the law. Leviticus 18 and 8. Leviticus 18 and 8. The nakedness of thy... Now, what does the word Leviticus mean? What does the word Leviticus mean? It means... Um, it means law, okay? Law. Join to me. Actually, in the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word there is lawyer, which means join to me. So it literally means law. Leviticus literally means law. From the Hebrew word lawyer, which means join to me. How we join to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son? Through the laws, the statutes, the commandments. So when we break them, that is fornication. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. So that's directed to the son. If you have sex with your father's woman, that is fornication. That is a breaking of the law. What law? Leviticus 18 and 8. We just read it. So this is what I replied to this guy. Here's the law that the individual... Well, let's read it. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as, as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Here's the law that individual spoke of. Here's the law that individual spoken of broke. And I read to you the law, Leviticus 18 and 8. So breaking the laws is fornication. No such thing as premarital sex. Sex is marriage. So he comes back with sex outside of marital covenant is extramarital. This guy's a retard, okay? And could be labeled fornication. <laughs> could now it could be labeled fornication? Either he has no proof. He's just, he, he just babbling, okay? He's just babbling. Anyway, hopefully you were edified by this video. 
and it's on to the next one.